How's it going guys? My name is Matt from the Whirly Bugger Fly Shop. Uh, today I'm going to be tying a fly I came up with called the Simple Smolt. Uh, you know, we came up with this fly uh, this year after we saw like a gazillion smolt in the river with the hatcheries on the river uh, and another one being added. Uh, I've just been seeing a ton of big fish eating smolt. So I wanted to come up with a simple uh, swinging pattern or stripping pattern for small. It's good in the winter too for a sculpin. Uh, so we'll get started. So in the vise I have fish skull, one fish skull, a uh, 20 millimeter shank and I'm using uh, UTC power thread and 140 denier in white. So I'm just going to close off this shank for starters, put a good thread base down. And then I have size large Senyo's intruder wire. This is chartreuse. You can use any color you want. Um, this is what I had on me and I, I kind of like the way it looks. So I went with chartreuse, but you can use red, whatever. It does not matter. So for my hook, I'm going to use a size four. Uh, Gamakatsu octopus hook. You could go smaller uh, if you're fishing other fisheries. You could go bigger as well. Uh, I've used similar patterns in Alaska and used bigger hooks, so it's kind of up to you. But I'm going to thread it, thread my intruder wire just like this. Make sure the tips are even, pull it through. And then for my wire, I like to go like at least the shank length, if not just a little bit more, um, but it's up to you how long you want to leave it. I find if you leave it too long, you can kind of get a lot of short strikes or, or when you're casting that wire will, will bend over. So like I said, it's up to you, but I usually do at least the shank length or shank and a half length of wire. I'll just tie that intruder wire in, lay a good thread base down, hit it with some zap a gap. And then I just have some grizzly rabbit strips. Cut about that much. I also like to cut more than I think I'm going to need. The first thing I'm going to do is right near the end of the strip, just pierce it through this octopus hook. So that'll hang like that, and we'll just kick that to the side for now. Revisit that. So the next thing I'm going to add is some double people lead eyes. I like the red and white, um, but, you, but again, you can use any color you want to. It does not matter. Those tied in. I'm gonna hit them with some zappa gap again. A couple more wraps. And then for the body, I'm gonna use some EP tarantula brushes in white. These brushes are pretty sweet. They're UV colored and they have little uh, legs on them too look really good in the water adds a little bit of movement to your fly as well so and those smolt are pretty bright so I like this this white color matches good
So I'm going to tie up to the eyes and then leave a little room. We'll make a throat and like a gill pack. Tie up to right there. All right, so to make the gill pack for uh, for this smolt, I'm gonna take two two uh, different types of dubbing. I have Senyo's Rainbow um, Fusion Dub and then some Ice UV Ice Dub UV Red. Uh, we're gonna spin it into a loop, so I'm just gonna, gonna go over like the proportions and kind of how I blend it. You can use a coffee grinder that sometimes does a cleaner uh, cleaner blend, but for these sculpins, it probably doesn't matter too much uh, but basically I'm just kind of picking it trying to get out all the lumps but blend these two together and then for my loops uh, I like to lay everything out just kind of see proportion wise before I before I go ahead and spin the loop so when you're doing dubbing loops if you do too much you'll get like big blobs uh, and it just and it just doesn't look symmetrical so that's why I think before uh, before I spin loops, I try to just lay everything out. And, uh, you can kind of see what your proportions look like. So I'll go through and add just a little bit more. And it's totally up to you. I mean, for, uh, some guys like them really sparse. I like for throats, like that's about the perfect amount for me for this fly. Uh, so we'll go ahead and spin that in a loop. All right, so to start our loop, I'm just gonna take my finger like this, and you'll have an open loop like so. Put my dubbing spinner in there, and then with the dubbing that we already proportioned, I'm just gonna carefully set it in that loop. It'll look like this. Just give that a spin. And if you get some noodles, uh, don't panic. A lot of it you can pick out with your uh, with your scissors or brush. I'll kind of show you how I do that. Just a second. So it'll look like this. And what I'll do. go back through, try to get everything as even as I can. Move that bobbin out. Go ahead and just wrap that on. So once I've got it kind of where I wanted it, I'm just gonna tie that loop off. And then we'll take that rabbit strip, seat that hook, make sure that strip's seated to the back of that octopus hook. And then I'm just looking for where, how much of it I need, where uh, towards the eye of my hook. So I'll snip that hood off, hook off, or rabbit strip off right there. Tie that in. just a little bit. That's one thing you want to watch out for with these micro shanks. Don't have a ton of real estate. So I'll just 
just lay down a good thread base. A couple half hitches. Use your whip finisher, whichever way you prefer. I'm faster with my hands, so I tend to use just use my hands, but uh, whatever method you like, just tie that off. Hit it with some zap gap. And that is the simple smolt. Thanks guys for watching. Uh, everything to tie this pattern can be find, found here at our shop or online on our website. Uh, you can also buy the pre-tied pattern. Um, so yeah, thank you.